Oh, uh, maybe we can go through some of those programs. What are the things that people can expect to learn here at Better Barista? Mm. The core program is always our holistic trainee beneficiaries. So whenever we write coffee programs, we have all of them in mind because some of them, um, the speed in which they learn are, are different, right? Mm -hmm. And the attention span some of them have are all different. Some can sit down and listen to you through a lecture. Some they get jittery and they start moving around. Some start fights, right? Uh, some become absent. So or some lose hope very, very fast. So you got to keep your thing, uh, your curriculum entertaining. So we have a call coffee program, okay? And then uh, we write these programs, right? And we design these programs and the core curriculum to teach what we think is important for them to get a job. But of course, that's not how you make money, right? Okay, so the way we make money is that we look out and then so the, the main certification is the SEA now. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the old days, though, it wasn't. It was SCAE and SCAA, right? So did you have both? Yeah, we had both. One. We yeah. had both, right? So the SEA used to control, have a bit of a tighter reign over their curriculum. So we just ran whatever they ran. The SCAE, however, was a bit looser. So they control the, the, the curriculum structure. They control the exams. But we are allowed to write our own class. So because of that, we take whatever we learn here and then we put them, right? Okay. There's yeah. more localization. That's right. You can That's respond right. more to, That's right. to the culture that you're in. Yeah, and then we just slant it and then we point it to the to the certification, the exams that we are supposed to write. We are very fortunate because um, the SCA program um, allows us to, to be very flexible about what we teach as long mm -hmm. as we uh, meet the criteria for the curriculum and the exams and the students can pass the exams. We are also very fortunate because in Singapore they have a tighter curriculum but it's still flexible enough that we can still write our own. Right? Yeah. So you can sprinkle your own flavor inside and our particular flavor that we sprinkle is basically at the end of the day, the coffee program was designed okay, to teach marginalized women as well as youth at risk. And because of that, integrated into the way we teach coffee okay, are certain principles that we write in uh, that develop that, right? Habits seeding of habits, application of knowledge, right? The first technique, the second technique, right? The first habit, the second habit, right? All these things are important, right? Because when you are developing skill sets from, from the start, right? You're building. So you must know that the first brick you build, right? How you're going to layer and how you're going to layer. So that's, that's the flavor we sprinkle. What would be an example of that? Like, what would be a good first habit? A good first habit, for example, um, would be right from the start, we teach people to align their milk jugs when they put down the milk jug on the table. Now, it seems like a simple thing. You mean where the handle is? Yeah. It so should always be this way. If your cup handle is this way, your milk jug handle, wherever you put it on the table, should be in, in the same direction. So they should be parallel. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we teach them to align the base of the cup. So you have two cups on the table and one milk jug. Mm -hmm. The base should be aligned. Okay. Right? So that automatically creates an environment where whenever I put something down, I am aware of what I'm putting down. As opposed to them being maybe zigzag or on a counter. putting it down because you like to do latte art and you're excited and you just put down. Mm -hmm. And it creates a mess. Mm -hmm. And then I got to come around and then or mommy has to come around and say, don't make a mess. Then you're like, oh, okay. But you see, it's not a habit. Yeah. But the person who has that habit of constantly working very tight in a very tight space, uh, always aligning their equipment, putting things down, right? Uh, that person will become a better worker, right? And it's the same thing for, for techniques, right? Uh, steaming milk distribution. There are many ways to steam milk. There are many ways to hold the jug. There are many ways to hold the jug for latte art. Mm -hmm. But what is the first technique you must learn, right? It's from this technique that you build the rest of your repertoire. So if you learn to tilt too early, for example, will you learn how to steam milk? Yes, you will, right? But then if you encounter a machine that doesn't allow you to do the tilt because it's too strong, then you might have a problem on tilting back. So that's why in better, for example, when we teach our foundation classes, we teach our students not to tilt the jug. So we only teach the tilt and the understanding behind the tilt in the intermediate class, right? So that's an example, right? So you, you're very careful. All these things come because you are teaching people of different wavelengths at one time. 
and all this will not be possible I feel if uh, when we first started out we are teaching able bodied and uh, very highly cognitive strong professionals right so if you get a bunch of uh, professionals coming in as enthusiasts they'll pick up things very fast mm -hmm. but when you are trying to teach um, our beneficiaries right you have to break things down right and then uh, you have to be patient right and you have to learn how people learn how do children learn how does somebody who is having a bad day and who is poor and has no no resources at home and has worked till 2 a.m and wants to support her kid and then comes in for class at 8 a.m how does this person learn because if you see the wrong technique or you tell them the wrong thing or you move too fast right they get demoralized they get discouraged right but you have to build so the question is how do you build a team that can do that like where do you find the people and because it seems like that's kind of a specialized ability as well mm. very carefully <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the people that work at better we all have the same DNA I think um, everyone's you don't find a single lazy person at better barista um, you don't find anybody that has no purpose you know everyone who's in here uh, tends to be a very high performing individual in the first place mm -hmm. right or has potential to be a highly confident or highly capable of, uh, or a person with great capacity right and then you you train them right so uh, for the academy specifically because we teach coffee I'm always uh, being very careful to make sure that I have a good mix you see um, and I was just uh, sharing that to my trainers today right um, that that a barista can always teach another individual how to make coffee mm -hmm. yeah but that's not how the academy makes money the academy makes money by running classes so in other words coffee skills alone is not enough to make you a trainer of 12 individuals who are giving their time and their energy to you education skills matter as well right um, so when people come in for interview we are interested in teachers we are interested in people who have education background our principal of the academy right now comes from the 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 um we call it the ITE in Singapore so mm -hmm. it's basically a college she's an educator okay. right she loves coffee she also learns coffee and she can make coffee right uh, she part times as a barista but she's an educator by by profession Training, yeah by right so so um again it really comes down you have to be very selective first the DNA and the character then after that you have to be very aware of what you're trying to build all right so let's talk a bit about that because like uh, let's talk a bit about character mm. so with with better better is kind of a philosophy right yeah. and there are these different uh, the steps or stages or and you see them written around all the walls right it says think mm. better feel better do better live better yeah be better yeah right so those are like core values yeah uh, the idea is the idea is holistic training mm -hmm. okay so teaching somebody how to make coffee is not enough or at least the people we are we are targeting or the, our beneficiaries the coffee skill alone is not enough to keep them in the job emotional training is important how you feel is important how you think is important how you live right it's important right so so uh, whenever we are we are training someone in the holistic training program we are very aware that just learning how to steam milk isn't isn't enough right uh, for some of them they need to learn the emotions and deal with the emotions right that comes from from being in the workplace and having and a working with the team as well yeah. like I find that that's also a huge challenge like you can have a rock star rock star barista right who's really good at his tasks maybe does well in competition that kind of thing yeah uh, but has a hard time in the team hmm. right or like uh, letting someone else shine for example yeah. I don't I don't I don't hire rock stars <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't like cowboys mm -hmm. because at the end of the day no matter how you swing it right a team will always be stronger than an individual 
So in the academy, uh, Lydia and I, whenever we are looking out for people to join the team, uh, and then on the broader picture, when Pam and Jean, Pam and Jean are the founders, right? Mm -hmm. On the broader picture, when they are looking for people to join the better group, right? Whether it's from the holistic training side or from the from the from the marketing side, you're always looking to see if this person, right, um, has extraordinary strengths. And then after that, you make an assessment. What is this person's weakness, right? Because if you have extraordinary strengths, you will also have extraordinary weaknesses, weakness. right? Then you make a decision character-wise, can they fit? If they can fit, right, okay? We balance it out. We look at the personalities, right? Uh, um, um, like the mayor bricks, right? So you mm -hmm. look at all these personality things, and then after that, you figure the fit, and then it fits. Then we take a shot. And, and it, one, it's, the, it's, as, it's more important is what you're saying. This, this aspect is yes. more important than the coffee skill. Kind of, but that is, the caveat to that is that in your organization, you must be very quick to forgive. Mm. That is the caveat. Okay? Because when you are hiring what you think is a person with exceptional potential, you must be very quick to forgive because they will make mistakes. And at Better Barista, we forgive very fast. Okay? And I would like to think we forget as well. In fact, I think it's it's very safe to say that in Better Barista, okay, we forgive and forget very fast. Pam embodies that. Pam's the founder. She embodies that. Jean embodies that. I will hope that I kind of embody that. That when you make a mistake and it's genuine, okay, we evaluate, we move on. Yeah. So the caveat is that you can't just like go, okay, I'm going to hire for character, right? Or I'm going to hire for strength. And then after that, when that person makes a mistake and then boom, it's up. So I think, I think there needs to be two sides of the coin. And an, an understanding that that mistake is coming. Yeah. And your need to forgive is also coming. Yeah. And then as a leader of this kind of environment, you need to be big enough to let that ball drop and still catch. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's, 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 the, that's the tricky part because we all get angry. Nobody gets angry if the ball drops and you catch it in time. Yeah. But for you to catch it in time, you have to be good enough to actually know when the ball is going to drop. And also, you're willing to let the mistake happen. Yeah. So that the team can grow. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I see that as one of my own weaknesses, is that like I have a tendency to jump in. Mm. I'm like, oh, let's do this one right. Mm. Right? As opposed to like letting, knowing that that mistake is going to happen, that ball is going to drop, yeah. and let it drop so mm -hmm. that the person can also learn from it and you can also learn. Yeah, but you also got to count the cost, right? Depends yeah. on the project, right? If you need yes. the money, <laughs> you know, if you're going broke. 100%. And you need the money, then let's not drop any balls, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it really comes down to, I think the context matters. I think the idea here is that a Better Barista and in the Better Group, uh, we are a very forgiving bunch of people. But that's also because we don't hire people that have a tendency to continuously make the same mistakes. Okay. Right? So it's catch-22. Um, it's not just all hiring techniques. Your, your culture has to be um, um, a culture that forgives very fast right, and allows mistakes.